Grade 8 Math, number 7.4b, Linear Equations with a Given Number of Solutions. We sort of talked about this in the last video, when we simplify equations using properties of equality. Those are the inverse operations. We get one of these three results. One solution, many solutions, or no solutions. It's going to be one of those three. Equations that simplify to x equals a, that would have one true solution. So that would be like x equals 2, or x equals 9, or x equals 23. It has a set particular one number that it's equal to. So that's one true solution. Equations that simplify to a equals a, or x equals x, have many true solutions. So that would be like 4 equals 4, or 16 equals 16, or negative 5 equals negative 5. Or if you do your inverse operations and you get it down to isolating x equals x, well, that could be any number equals any number. That could be infinitely many true solutions, couldn't it? When we have equations that simplify to a equals b, when the a and b are not equal to each other, there's no solution. They're false. Because if we have 5 equals 2, or 7 equals 0, or 16 equals negative 3, that's a false statement. That's not true. There's no solution. We can use these results to write a linear equation that has a given number of solutions. Now, a linear equation in one variable that has no solution, well, we can use the strategy of working backwards. We can start with a false statement, like 6 equals 2. We'll add an x to both sides, so now we got 6 plus x equals 2 plus x. Well, is there some constant number that's not a variable, some constant number like the 6 or the 2 that we could add or subtract to both sides to maybe make this true? Let's add a 5. So we add 5 to both sides, and then we put the like terms together. 6 plus 5 is 11. Now we got 11 plus x, and 2 plus 5 is 7. Now we got 7 plus x. All we did was we have the exact same equation, just raised by a plus 5. It's the same thing as this one. We didn't change anything. It's still false. We can verify that our equation has no solution by using properties of equality, those inverse operations, and simplify. So let's take away the x from each side. Let's create a zero pair here and a zero pair here and eliminate these. Now we've got 11 equals 7. Well, that's not true. 11 doesn't equal 7. So even if we multiply both sides of a number, it'll still be false unless we multiply by 0. If I multiply both sides by 0, 11 times 0 is 0, and 7 times 0 is 0, we'd have 0 equals 0. And you know what? That's true. So if we're going to multiply by any number except the 0, it'll still be false. The only one that'll make it true is the 0, OK? So we started with a false statement of 6 equals 2 and performed balanced operations on both sides of the equation. It had no effect on the original equation or how it was true or false. So it's an equation with no solution. It's a contradiction. It's a false statement. Shame on you. So, let's take a look at this one. We've got 8x plus 4 equals 4, and then 2x plus 1 in parentheses. Can you already see what I see? What's 4 times 2? Yeah, we got the 8x right there. 4 times 1 is 4. It's got the same equation on both sides. See that? We did our distributive property, and we came up this side is the same as this side. It's like a mirror image, isn't it? It's, or Well, nah, not exactly mirror image, because the 4 would be there, but... It is the exact same equation on each side of the equal sign, isn't it? So they're definitely equal. And we take away 4 from each side to isolate the variable. We end up with 8x equals 8x. Well, there's an infinite number of solutions for 8x equals 8x. What is it? 8 times 1 equals 8 times 1. 8 times 2 equals 8 times 2. How about 8 times negative 1 equals 8 times negative 1? Or 8 times 0 equals 8 times 0? We could go on forever. We could go into the trillions and still be going, couldn't we? 8 times something is equal to 8 times that something. See? Infinite solutions, all right? That's the identity one. So this is a contradiction one, because there's no answer. That's the identity one, because there's infinite solutions, OK? I'm going to continue on to 7.4c, and we're going to do a linear equation where we find the angles the base of a triangle. We'll see how we can do that, okay? Because that's one of the problems in the book, and I thought I'd show you how to do that in case you end up stumbling on that one when you try to do your work in the book, okay? I'll see you there, 7.4c. Bye.